Gonna show you how Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 5 totally obliterates the post-trib rapture heresy. Let me show you this. Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 5. And Saul, yet breathing all threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he be found any of this way, whether they be men, or whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there sh shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a, a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. What is it saying? Well, Saul was not actually persecuting Jesus Christ in person. He was persecuting his body, his church. But it was affecting Jesus Christ in heaven. He was saying, why are you persecuting me? But he wasn't actually attacking Jesus. He was persecuting his church. But you see, again, we're part of the body of Christ. So what happens to us? It affects Jesus in heaven. So this creates a problem for the post-trib rapture heresy. If we're going into the time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the tribulation, you have a bit of a problem there, right there. Right there, because right now we're part of the body of Christ. So if we're being persecuted, it's affecting Christ. That's why he's saying, "Why are you persecuting me?" Because he's persecuting his church, his body, the body of Christ. But in Revelation chapter five, verse nine, you have a bit of a problem for post-tribbers. It says. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God, out of thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. So the saints are basically praising Jesus as he's opening the books. So wait a second. If we're going into the time of Jacob's trouble, does that mean that Jesus Christ is pouring out his seals on himself? You know, because... In time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the tribulation, if we're going to go into this time period and Jesus Christ is going to pour out his seals on us, that means he'd be doing it on himself. So you mean to tell me that Jesus Christ is going to pour out the seals on himself? You know, it's ridiculous. I mean, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5 totally obliterates the post-trib rapture. Because right now, if the body, I'll, I'll say it again, if the body of Christ is being persecuted, Jesus is saying, you're persecuting me. But if we go into this time period, Jesus Christ basically would, would be pouring out the seals on himself which is utter insanity. So don't be deceived. That's just one of the many proofs against the uh, you know, post-trip satanic heresy. Uh, they, they say, give us one verse that proves it. Okay, there's your one verse. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? But Jesus Christ is, is pouring out the seals on the earth. So wait a second, he's doing it on himself? I don't think so. It's, uh, that, that just destroys the whole thing. I mean, there's so much proof text. You know, there's um, Genesis chapter 18 and 19 where... You know, we talks about how Abraham says, you know, a righteous God, like, won't, I'm paraphrasing, but a righteous God won't judge the righteous with the wicked, all this other stuff. You know, so if a righteous God doesn't judge the righteous with the wicked, but then we go into this time period, that means he would be judging the righteous with the wicked, which, is, you know, it's a contradiction there. I mean, there's so many problems when you get to the post uh satanic heresy, but this is just the, the, one of the big ones that just obliterates it. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.